But it's me again. A very good day to you. And you see the background. I'm by the sea. And if you see me doing this, it's because there's something called sandfly. And uh, but it's, I just want to let you know that we're relaxing here and have a little chat. So I trust you had a good week. I, I had one, and I'm looking forward to many more with you. <laughs> Don't forget to press play, and of course, let me hear your voice now. Put a little comment on the chat, a little email, Nation Mind 2021, is it? At gmail.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we ended up last time I'm talking about the foundation of the whole psyche of education. And uh, we know why we have to start children's school because we don't, it's a mandate by government. If we don't, you could be jailed or could be, you know, brought to some kind of matter of judicial intent to make sure the child gets educated. But how, how, how? And what are we creating? Yeah, we talk about a lot of negativity when we come to church. There's a lot of violence, especially in our country. In most countries, school violence, uh, parental abuse, children disrespecting and working differently with parents. We have all those kinds of issues. Uh, we have a lot of Young people involved in very hard crime, petty crimes. We have, you know, we, we, the list goes on. And I'm saying that we have to realize that these same people who have grown up, even in their 30s, who are still doing all the shooting and all that, they came up from a system that we imposed them to. And we have to realize that even though we didn't see them bullying, they were bullied or they bullied. Uh, insignificantly, but they must always have that mind to avenge. It could be that, or it could be a lot of other issues that are not being identified. So I, I want us to get back to that phase where we talk about self-learning and appreciating people's differences in terms of how. So I want to spend some time um, today just looking at how we we, we, we think about education and we think about the institutions that are now established for instructional education. We call them schools. Uh, or we call them colleges. Uh, but how are they built? How are they established uh, for our learning purposes? Uh, some people leave homes that are quite small uh, low-income homes, uh, one bedroom, two bedrooms, but they are going to school. They are accustomed to running around without any clothes, running around up and down, playing. But now they are regimented in the school. You cannot wear this. You have to wear uniform. Ooh. We all look alike. Very seldom in a home, everybody looked alike, except maybe a twin. Or you had hand-me-downs. Even though the hand-me-downs, it was not you all wore the same thing at the same time but now we are faced with having one uniform whoa we all look like if we you know in some as we say in jail <laughs> with the same uniform you know and remember that's what jail has eh? the same uniform or we are in institutionalized as militants because military have the same eh, the same uniform and how do we work that kind of system how, how do we work that kind of system? How? What do you work? Police, fire? Pr 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 did I say prisons? Regiment? Uniforms. So when you think of a uniform, it's presented and we go to banks or to offices and we see uniforms, everybody looking alike. So that, that we don't want to get a familiar context, but yet, it's, it's presented to us in a very regi regimented context. That you have to make sure it's clean. If your shoe is dirty, you get licks. If your fingernails are dirty, if your hair not combed properly. Wow. When I was home, I had a bath, put on clothes, wrinkled or not wrinkled, somewhere iron. If we were going to church, or going to a wedding, or going somewhere 
special. I love that we just dressed. But here now we have to transition with a different kind of thought pattern towards this, this, this system. And so that when I am thinking of sending my child to school, do I sit and tell my child or warn my child or advise my child that there is going to be a difference in terms of the environment, how you look and everybody's going to look alike. And how are we going to work out this particular classroom that is different? The furniture is different. The feel on your bottom is different. You have to sit now. You have to write. You have to protect your books. You have to carry your bag wherever you go, else it can be stolen at home. It's there. I have to make sure I eat what I carry. I can't go and pick my brother's plate or picking this one and say, Mommy, no! I have to shut my mouth and do it according to the school rules or code of conduct. So it's important for us to understand that when we are driving out or walking in or driving or walking out, we have to understand this child is impacted by the difference within the environment. How am I handling that? How am I going to be able to put my child there from eight o'clock to two or half two? I'm accustomed to seeing the child. The child's accustomed to being home. The child's accustomed to wanting water going to the toilet when the child wants. Now the child has to have asked permission. Permission to pee? Permission to eat? I didn't know that. Are you hearing me? So that these transitions are important for the continuum of education. It's not just about the books and the subject matter. It's about the entire environment that affects the child. And then you put me in a space with people I don't know. I don't know them. I, where they come from? Who are they? And I, I find myself gravitated. Gravitating, sorry. To children who have like minds or like behaviors or like concepts that makes it more comfortable. But then at last, mommy, oh no, no. That's not a good friend. Don't talk to that person. I don't like how we look. I don't like how she looking. But the issue is the child is finding a space where, which accommodates their own system of learning. Are we ready for that? Are we able to say yes to that? Are we willing to say that this is something we can work with? Parents, guardians, ah? Uh, do you walk around the school with your child and say, this is different, learn it, we know what we have at home. Do you prepare your child for those differences? You could check me out. I have done several programs on transitions for fourth and fifth standard children. So they don't feel aghast, or they don't feel despaired in this new larger environment with strange people. What we're getting at here is conduct. You see, you, you would not realize, let's go back home. You have child number one. You realize that your child number one is going to behave indifferently when child number two comes. By the time child number three comes, that child is already behaving so different they want to know where your child went to. But every time you add a stranger to the house, you're going to cause that type of deflection. It's important for us to wrap our heads around that and say, hey, I'm trusting my child into a world of second children or third children without them being born. They didn't see a different of birth. They're not being called brothers, so they're called they're strangers. How do we look at that and bring the reality of that into the child's mind? 
how do we therefore expect the child to have a certain level of integrity and how do we work this, the child to appreciate teaching and learning that is different and again alas new topics new things so it's not just new environment new voices new uniform new look new bench it's new materials and a new methodology because that lady or man sat in front of you called teacher is not teaching like the person I had in my previous class so you have a multiplicity of egos coming to your classroom especially in the secondary school which each subject has a new personality so one just doesn't mind if you look through the window the other one beats balls at you or gives you attention or says that you did you wrong and this other person said right wow a cacophony of errors which is all affecting the child's psyche and therefore the child's behavior so when we come to conduct and we, we, we look at what the child is about we must realize that these factors are important for us to sit down and chat about work through are you hearing me the pressure, even the pressure, and we, and we haven't talked about that yet. The pressure to get from sec, primary school to secondary school. Oh my gosh! In most countries, there are these examinations that are important for the child. The child is pushed into and drilled into and worked into and beat into to make sure the child has a particular percentile. So the child goes to a particular prestige school. And if the child doesn't go, the child is not prestige. So when the child behave in not prestige, then they want to be the child and say the child bad. But we have the, we are developing the indisciplines. But, but how we interpret integrity of learning. How do we expect a child to commit to these institutions? To be that proper student. No parent wants the child to be to be called in by their their principal and then the principal to call the parent and to be told your child and then to tell the child suspended and the child expelled whew, or because of something called behavior which we have not monitored at all we have not sat down to see why the child's behavior is where the child went to get his behavior that, that child that was sweet the ball and my nice child look at my do you look at the baby oh my god by the next seven years <sighs> by the next 10 years we'll talk about child 15. and so parents also try to de defend their children and show hostility it's a cycle you know it's very interesting very very interesting so, so i want us to see how we are working out that concept of security for our children trying to make them safe but yet creating unsafe conditions by how we treat with their learning development which is as i repeated said in the first in last week's uh broadcast it's no longer self-taught it's instructional. It's no longer coming out of my own initiative and my own intuition. It's what I am told to learn, whether I can learn it or not. Whether it means anything to me or not means anything to me. How, how, how do I work that? And I, and I want us to understand that there are real, and that's why we have Howard Gardner's uh, nine <clears throat> but, uh, but, um multiple intelligences because we have discovered to research that there are several ways of learning and, and, and that goes into adulthood i'm an orator i'm a lecturer i'm a preacher uh, i'm speaking to you with, the, with a particular style of auditory but there are some people who cannot sit here and talk to you without drama kinesthetic without maybe doing artwork to express themselves without dancing to so, so them they're learning no they're not learning they're not learning they're not 
sitting down in the classroom and beating that book, to use the expression. Because if they don't beat the book, I will be there. So, so let's, we, we need to work out how we are bringing our children to that transition as guardians, as parents, and how to let our child appreciate the differences. Now, we, we, we want to be inclusive, not exclusive. We, we want your child with all these disparities, as I mentioned, all these differences, we still want the child to have an inclusive education because that's what we are taught as adults from our own experiences. We want to make sure that the, the child is not left out. But yet, we don't realize that the child comes into the school left out, trying to find a, a fit inside. So that we have to now realize that there is a greater pressure coming into the school being left out, coming to try to get in, and yet in the getting in, we realize there's a lot of disparities and differences in the getting in. So I want to befriend you, but you're so different. How can I? And so we, we have to learn to prepare our children. We have children with varying differences, uh, as I said earlier, with Howard Gardens and Nine Intelligences, but also different challenges of learning. Whether they cannot read, they can't see properly, they have problems with figures, with letters, or because of how they grew up. Now they are comfortable with themselves and they might find ways in terms of coping, but we want them to shift in a particular line that makes us feel good about their, how we want them to cope, or the system, and therefore we create resistance. We also have to realize that there are people who are gifted in terms of their ability to self-learn and now come into the sphere where they can really adapt to anything. And their children who we call gifted learners or bright or A students or A plus students. And, and, and I know of several of those kinds of students who are there and they stand out. Now what you have to do is to teach these children how to integrate with people who are less intellectual and how to work out the system inclusively. And how to make them feel that they're the only bright ones around. Because bright is a word that we use only because of a 90% plus. But a child could be 30% and bright too. Because there are things a child can do at, with a 30% um, percentile that the 90% cannot do. Or they can handle certain pressures that the 90% cannot do. And, and, and we, 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 we have to, oh Lord, we, we have to work that out. Are you following that? We have children who come into the classroom with certain illnesses. So then, uh, whether they, are, they have had asthma or they may have a communicable disease or they may have, in, in today's situation, HIV AIDS, uh, they may have other systems with their feet or they may have issues with their mobility. They may have shortened limbs, they may have a twist air, a funny head. All these things we have to let our children know that they're going to experience because that is where the bullying is. I am not able to handle what I see. Oh my gosh, you don't see that big hump on the man back, you, or the boy back. You don't see how the boy have two, the leg long and short. You didn't grow up with long and short. And worse yet, you have children who come from homes where parents do not have the kind of finances to establish the kind of clothing, the kind of food they get. Look, 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 he can't even wear a good shoe, he bare feet, he has slippers. That's not the school uniform. And we press people to get school uniform when they don't have the money, they can come on a slipper. Why they can't come on a slipper? It's not about the shoe, it's about the capacity for learning. So we have people from impoverished populations and in communities. We also have people who have different linguistic, ethnic, 
uh, and cultural norms. People speak differently. People have twang. I, I, I know even at this age, working with people, they speak from a grassroots level. I was speaking from a very more English oriented level. There are people who come in here and can't, don't know the difference with, with certain words. And we, we try to be either English or British, tomato, tomato. Are you hearing me? Somebody might say, damn, and you might think it's a curse word. As a guy, somebody say, no, it's a, it's a portion of water that is enclosed. Uh, so we have to teach people, our children, going into these institutions to begin to identify differences in language, differences in what we call patwa, Creole, the way we talk. And within our own nation, we have people that live in North, South, East and West, all having different perspectives of what English is. And then we go into a classroom and we are taught English. We are a mess. We have people who are disadvantaged and marginalized in terms of they can't find, they can't come out, they can't travel, they, they have no means of transportation, they have no means of vehicles or people have to walk to school. So that several people can't come, they don't have money to buy the uniform. We have people who are homeless, children who you do not know they're homeless. They appear and some some communities, some nations, you have food feed, uh, school feeding. So they come and they eat breakfast and lunch and they, they take extra boxes because that's for their dinner. We do not know. We have not even asked a question. But yet, we want everybody to behave the same way in the same school with all these differences. And we have children who are victims of crime. Their parents, their siblings, their relatives were gunned down somewhere were murdered or, and they have a, oh, their own sensitivity and their own emotions and they come into school and you want them to be kind and nice but there's a population out there that is against them what I'm saying today is that we need to pay attention to the differences in terms of how we are finding transitions of, in terms of the education system. My aim here for this next couple of weeks is to help us to see if we can eliminate or alleviate the whole issue. The eliminate is a good word, change, bring change to this school violence. That is going to go from school violence to national violence. Because you're not just going to get up one morning and become a murderer or a killer. No, it starts, it starts from way back so we have to do something about it and I want to speak to that very clearly and I hope you're hearing me parents don't just get excited and in our country and in other countries around the Caribbean we have these exams coming up in the next couple of months between now and maybe May in certain countries to get children from primary to secondary school. The pressure, the psychological pressure to adapt a particular curriculum, a curricula that they will do good. And everybody wants to go to the top schools. You can't, we all can't all fit in the same compound. So we have to learn how to assimilate that and how to work that and reconcile differences and bring people into that understanding, bring children into that understanding because the children matters for our tomorrow. There's going to be no tomorrow without a present day child. And that present day child needs to be encouraged and I want us to begin to identify that. So, transition yes learning how to appreciate the change in one's environment understanding school dynamics understanding social behaviors differences understanding how we go to get integrity and people children to appreciate where they are and how they are and of course inclusivity how to look at the differences in terms of the kinds of children we're working with and how to pre prepare your child for higher learning whether it's high learning from secondary, primary to secondary, or secondary to tertiary, it's all higher learning, development for our tomorrow.
Let's see if we can make a better child, a better school. Let's see if we can stop the violence and get people to appreciate life. Dr. Nair saying, have a good week and see you next play day.